It was only a matter of hours after the first plane hit the World Trade Center on 9-11 that we were told who to blame. I hope we do not compound this tragedy by reaching out to make accusations before the FBI and the CIA uh, inform us of what happened. That is exactly what happened, of course, uh, uh, after the Oklahoma City bombing. Uh, the highest degree of uh, probability associated with this attack, which had remarkable coordination and logistical sophistication, would be Osama bin Laden's Al-Qaeda group. In the studio. Oh, there we go. Ken. Ken is an international terrorism expert. Ken, good morning to you. Good afternoon to you. Excuse me. How are you, Matt? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. When, when you hear the U.S. officials saying they are already looking in the direction of Osama bin Laden, do you think they're looking in the right place? I think so. Matt, I mean, the sophistication of this attack, uh, the fact that it was elaborately planned. Um, you know, senior U.S. intelligence officials, or one senior U.S. intelligence official, uh, says now that the U.S. is 90% certain that bin Laden was responsible for mm -hmm. today's attack. Would you concur with that conclusion? I, I think that's a very good possibility. You have to look at who has the organization and who has the capability to do something like this. And, of course, uh, bin Laden's al-Qaeda organization uh, has to be right at the top of the list. Right now, suspicion focuses on Osama bin Laden. But first things first, the FBI is combing the wreckage for evidence and all U.S. military bases and embassies are at the highest state of alert. Now, we are told from sources earlier today that senior administration officials told key members of Congress that they are, quote, certain, based on the evidence they have gathered so far, confident, I'm sorry, not certain, confident, based on the evidence gathered so far, that people and organizations associated with Osama bin Laden are responsible for this. But coming out of the national security meeting tonight, I was told by a senior administration official they do not want to jump to conclusions here. The administration will say nothing publicly about that. This official saying, quote, we're going to take a little time to sort this out. So the president being briefed Many of us in the Western world knew little or nothing about Osama bin Laden and his shadowy al-Qaeda terrorist network before watching the tragedy of September 11, 2001 unfold in real time on our television screens. Some had heard bin Laden's name before in connection with the financing of high-profile terrorist incidents, like the 1998 U.S. Embassy bombings in Africa, or the bombing of the USS Cole in 2000. But a more detailed understanding of this man, his background, and the network of Islamist jihadists we are told he is directing, remains largely the purview of South Asian scholars, counterterrorism experts, and government officials. Understandably, in the days and weeks following those horrific events, a traumatized public turned to these experts to make sense of what they had just witnessed. Very soon, a narrative began to emerge, one that seemed to explain what had happened and what it meant for the future of a world that, we were told, had changed forever. Tell us a bit about Osama bin Laden. Uh, what sort of resources and manpower and money he's got and what he's trying to achieve? What is Osama bin Laden? Is he a politician? Is he a warrior? Is he a preacher? A little of all? A little of all, I think, sir. He's a... A millionaire Saudi businessman believed to be living in exile in Afghanistan. He controls and finances Al-Qaeda, an umbrella network of Islamic militants. He is a... a a uh, very soft-spoken man, a man of, of eloquence. And he's vowed to destroy the United States. He's clearly um, someone... What we must remember, though, is that this story, this understanding of our world, which was largely constructed for us in those first chaotic hours after the attacks, and which has remained largely unchanged to this day, only appears monolithic and unchallenged because it has been presented to us in a carefully constructed series of sound bites and interviews with official sources. The events of 9-11, like all major events in our 24-7 network news world, have become a mediated experience. 
We have been told how to understand these events by the same editors, executives, and media moguls that so obviously failed in their duties in the run-up to the war in Iraq. The truth is that the story of Al-Qaeda is much more complex than we have been led to believe. That Osama bin Laden is at best the dupe of Western intelligence forces and likely their collaborator. That he may in fact have died shortly after 9-11 and that his all-pervasive Al-Qaeda organization, with its alleged link to seemingly every terrorist incident in the world today, is in fact a media creation, a childlike simplification of a complex web of organizations led and populated by double agents and fictitious characters. The truth is that Al-Qaeda, as we have been led to understand it, does not exist.